good morning, family. I'm excited to be with y'all again today. I have a word for you. Um, you know, I was praying and I was seeking the Lord one night and about three in the morning, the Lord came to me and, 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 and very loud in my spirit. And he told me, he said, Brandon, you're asking me about uh, who's going to be some of the major leaders in the end time army. And I was, so I was praying about this and he said, John Kilpatrick will be one of the major voices in the end time army that you can trust and you can listen to. And this was what the Lord spoke to me. So I, I check in on his ministry every once in a while and I listen to see what's going on. Well, one of uh, my family members sent me a video that he did a, a, a couple Sundays ago about uh, a, a word that the Lord gave him in the middle of the night. And you'll you'll see, I'm putting it all on here. I'm going to show you that basically the Lord gave him a warning also, telling him about a major uh, earthquakes, major uh, uh, volcanoes, things like that that were going to start to take place. Now, I believe what he was seeing was for the United States. And I'm telling you all, I saw a major event taking place, like he even pointed out what the Lord showed him, you'll see, is in uh, Oregon. So, and I don't want to go until you can fix and watch it. So, I just want to tell you all, this, it's, it's amazing to see when God speaks to people uh, uh, that are, are prophetic, that it's like a mirror. You know, it, it's, it's different, but it's the same. Because it's the same spirit of the Lord, but he speaks to each one of us differently, but, he, but it, the way we interpret it, you know? And so I just think it's amazing. So I want to encourage you all, you know, watch this whole thing. This is a prophetic message for today. This is a, a warning for what's coming. A major shift, a major shaking is about to take place in this world. And it's not just about America. It's about a worldwide wake up. Jesus Christ is coming and you better be ready. If you are not saved, today's your day. You need to get born again. Turn and, and, and repent of your sins for Jesus Christ is coming, you all. And I just want to encourage you all, please watch this whole thing. It will bless you. This sermon is amazing. So um, I, hope, I hope this blesses you. Knowing this first, there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and they'll be saying this. Well, where is the promise of his coming? Since the fathers fell asleep, that is the ones that used to be alive that told us the Lord was coming, they fell asleep. He hadn't come. All things continue as they were from the beginning of creation without missing a lick. The Bible said, for this they willingly <clears throat> are ignorant. They have made up their minds that no matter what they see, they're going to be untouched by it. They've made up their minds that no matter what sign is taking place in the world, on their televisions, and before their very eyes, they're not going to believe. They've made up their mind. They've got a blindfold on. They are willing, willfully ignorant of that which the word of the Lord, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. It says two things, willingly ignorant. Not just ignorant, but willingly ignorant. Won't let it penetrate them. Won't think on it. Won't tell their children won't discuss it with their wife or their husband. Pastors won't preach it to their congregations. Willingly stick their head in the sand or put a blindfold on and say, <clears throat> nah, it's, it's, it's nothing important. I saw preachers standing behind a pulpit and they had oil, this smooth looking, looking oil all over their mouth. And it was dripping from their lips. And they had roaches and bugs crawling in and out of their mouth and laying upon their lips. Bugs. And they were crawling in their teeth. And the bugs were crawling in and out of their mouth. And they would lay upon their lips as they would speak. And they had a, um, you know, like a shryster, like 
in their eyes, they were their motives behind what they were preaching was all um, selfish gain. Trying to appease the ears of the people. Then I saw ears on the people. Uh, and I could see their ears were just being... Sp sp all these 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 whispers of of the things that were happening in the spirit were just were just to pacifying them. Everything is going to be good. All things are are going to work for your good for those that love the Lord. They they were speaking the word, but they were not speaking what God was on God's heart. They were speaking things, but they weren't speaking things to make you grow. And I saw these 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 like I said bugs coming out of their teeth and out of their mouth. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, Brandon, the, the preachers are not teaching the, mi the meat of the word to grow, grow my children up into adult stature. And those that are on terrorist watches, watch list are crossing into our country now every day, many times a day. And I know that many people coming across our borders are desperate for a new life and a new start in life, and I understand that. I really do. I feel sorry for many of them. They are poor. They can't get health care. They dream of coming to America, and I can understand they're willing to pay any price to get here, even if it means coming in illegally, and my heart goes out to them. But there are many others who have an evil intent to destroy our country and to destroy our way of life. And I want to show you a scripture. I'll have it on the screen. It's found in Nahum, chapter three, verse 13. I'm going to read it in the King James first, and then I'm going to read it in the NIV and the New Living Translation. Here's the, in a, here's the King James. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto your enemies. In Nahum NIV 3.13, it says, Look at your troops. They're all weaklings. The gates of your land are wide open to your enemies. But this one really gets me, the New Living Translation. Your troops will be as weak and helpless as women. The gates of your land will be opened wide to the enemy. That's the southern border. I have heard so much talk about the southern border, and I have heard so much talk about how that this is not happening and that's not happening. This presidential candidate said, I'm gonna build a wall and we're gonna keep them out. Another president gets elected and he opens them up and anybody can come. It's sickening. It is sickening. It's like there's no care anymore. We don't care who comes in. We don't care if they got bombs. We don't care if a hundred of them comes in and they've all got parts to a nuclear bomb. Come on in. And they'll build it and try to have a limited nuclear weapon explode somewhere in this country. If that happens, I hate to say it, but we deserve it because we have taken and thrown all caution to the wind. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our country is in great peril and I think it's time somebody stands up and says it. Let me read this to you again in the New Living Translation. Your troops will be as weak and helpless as women. In other words, the troops will be completely ineffective the gates of your land open wide to the enemy. Open wide to who? Yeah. To people wanting to come here and have a better, and he says, no, open wide to the enemy. You see what happens when you put a blindfold on is the enemy's coming in and you don't even care anymore that it's the enemy. Listen, you sow to the wind, you'll reap the whirlwind. Now I wanna show you this scripture in Nahum. This is interesting. I think this sums up the Biden administration as good as any scripture I've ever read. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will discover your skirts upon your face. I will show the nations your nakedness and the kingdoms your shame. In the NIV, it says this, God says, I'm against you, declares the Lord Almighty. I'll lift your skirts over your face and I'll show the other nations your nakedness, and I'll show all the kingdoms your shame. The kingdoms of this world are seeing how weak our president is and how weak his administration is. I'm talking about all the way down from the Secretary of Defense to the Secretary of State to the president himself. Weak, 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 weak. 
and America is in peril. And unless something happens pretty quick, America is gonna be in great peril. I saw tens of millions of people coming from the Mexico border, the southern border, trying to invade America over the next uh, year. But it wasn't all people that were uh, uh, from Mexico. They were from all over the world. I literally saw millions of people coming. Millions. So much that, you know, whenever you're in a crowd um, at, at a football field, at a big concert, that they're stacked upon stacked upon stacked upon stacked, all in a, a lines. It's like a sea of people. All a sea of people coming from across, trying to come across the border. But that was like all at once, all like trying to come at once. And they were all, there was nothing they could do. There were so many people. You know what I'm saying? Seeking God for revival because you know as well as I do now, revival is the only thing that will make a difference in America. It's the only thing. Revival is the cure of all ills. We need the government to be on the shoulders of Jesus Christ. That's what we need. Come on, somebody, help me. I said, we need the government to be on his shoulders. Can you shout amen? The only thing that's going to save America is an awakening unto God. That's the only thing that's ever going to save a nation is Jesus Christ and preaching him crucified and what he did on that cross for you. That we need to get born again and we need to get on fire for the Lord. And you start being the salt of the earth and teaching people the word of God. And that's what's going to change a nation. Not politics. Politicians are just human. Jesus said this. He said in Luke 17, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They ate and they drank. They married the wives and they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark till the very day, and the flood came and destroyed everybody. Likewise, Jesus mentions this. He said, I want to bring to your attention, likewise, it was also as it was also in the days of Lot. They ate and they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built, but on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even so, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Jesus said this now. This came out of the mouth of Jesus. This is why they didn't like Jesus, because Jesus was a truth teller. He wasn't trying to make nobody mad. He was just saying, I'm a watchman on the wall, and I see something I think you need to know. And he said, as you read about these stories in your scriptures, read and understand in the last days it's gonna be just like this, like it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. He said, as it was in that day, it will be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And then he said, remember this, remember Lot's wife. Now I'm gonna talk about these in just a minute. So Abram in chapter 13 of Genesis said to Lot, let there be no strife, son. I pray between me and you and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we're brethren, is not the whole land before you. Separate yourself, I pray, from me. If you'll take the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes, and he was a narcissist. He wanted what was best for him, not what was best for his respectable and honorable uncle, Uncle Abraham, but a narcissist wants what's best for them. Could I say this before I go any further? That's what's wrong today with leadership in America. Just about every one of them is narcissist. Could I say that one more time? What's wrong today is the people that's on subcommittees, they're more interested in that camera being on them and them so-called pinning a witness down so that they can look good but their people at home. They're more concerned about looking good to the people at home than they are trying to find the truth. He said, Lot lifted up his eyes and behold the plain of Jordan. It was well watered everywhere before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. 
it, even as the garden of the Lord, which was like Eden, it was beautiful. It was like the land of Egypt. It was just beautiful all the way down to a place called Zor. And Lot chose him the plain of Jordan and Lot journeyed east and they separated from each other. Abraham and Lot did. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain and pitched his tent towards Sodom. Big mistake. But the men of Sodom were wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. So there came a day in chapter 19, verses one through 14. I'm gonna read this. I, I can read it better. The word says it better than I can preach it. There came two angels to Sodom at evening and Lot sat at the gates of Sodom and Lot saw these angels, rose up to meet them and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. He recognized them as angels. And he said, behold now my lords, turn in, I pray you, into my house and tarry all night. Wash your feet and you shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, no, we would rather abide here in the streets. And he pressed upon them greatly and they turned in unto him and entered into his house and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread and they did eat. Now these angels ate. They were not just spirit beings, ethereal, but they were nebulous. They could digest food, they could eat food, and they went to Lot's house and they ate a feast of unleavened bread. Now before they laid down that night, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed Lot's house round about, both old men and young men, and all people from all quarters, and they called unto Lot, and they said, hey, Lot, where's those men that came to you this night? Bring them out that we may know them, or bring them out that we may have relations with them. Lot went out to the door unto them and shut the door after him. The reason he shut the door after him is he didn't want those angels to hear him negotiating with these evil men. Because once you ever go to the devil's table, the devil's negotiating table, you're not going to get away until you give something up. And notice what he said. He called them brethren. He said, brethren, don't do so wickedly. What did you call them? Brethren? Lot? Do you know who you are? Do you know that your uncle is Abraham? Have you forgot that your uncle is called the friend of God? And you're out here dealing with these wicked, evil sodomites and you're calling them brethren? Well, where does that put you? And it gets more interesting. Listen to this. He said, I've got two daughters. Well, I have a question. Reckon how those daughters felt about that time. He closed the door behind him, didn't want them angels to hear him negotiating with these evil men. He said, I got two daughters which have never known a man. They're virgins. Let me bring them out to you and you do good to them as you see in your eyes, but to these men don't touch them. For therefore they came under the shadow of my roof. You know what this is? Lot did this. Willfully ignorant. I'll give you my daughters. I don't care what you do to them. In other words, I'm willing to put my daughters on the negotiating table. Don't touch the angels, but you can have my daughters. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? First of all, the angels is well able to take care of themselves. Amen? They're well able to take care of themselves. As a matter of fact, they're going to see within 24 hours, he'll take care of everybody in that whole double twin city, Sodom and Gomorrah. But he offered his daughters, willfully ignorant. 
What are you talking about, man? Your uncle is Abraham. Have you forgot who you are? Have you forgotten that Abraham is the friend of God? God said he's his friend and you're out there talking about these people and you're negotiating with these people and willing to give Uncle Abraham's great nieces to these men to have their way with them. You see what I'm talking about? Sin will make a literal fool out of you. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he needs to be a judge. Now we'll deal worse with you and with them. And they pressed sore upon the men, even Lot, and they came to break the door down. Such a strong spirit of, of lust was loose in those cities. It was permeating the atmosphere of those twin cities, Sodom and Gomorrah. And these men were burning under that strong spirit of lust. And they came to break the door down because Lot would not present those men to, the, to these men. And they were going to come in, break the door down, and get them and rape them. And the Bible says, but the men put forth their hand, the angels put forth their hand, pull Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. Now I have something I'd like to say. If I was one of those men of Sodom and there were two men in there that I was interested in, and I saw that they had the power to <laughs> like that, I just said, I'm going to the house. I don't, I don't want nothing to do with that. I don't want nothing to do with that. But they had the power to <laughs> blind those men. The Bible said there's a bunch of them. They surrounded the house. They were violent. They were ready to break down the door. There was a bunch of them. But the angels could well take care of themselves and they blinded those men and they went groping off in the dark. And so here's what it says. The men said to Lot, is there anybody else here besides your daughters and son-in-law and your sons? And whatever you have in the city, bring them out of this place. In other words, it was a state of emergency now. When the angels really saw that it was a state of emergency, the angels said, if, is there anybody else here besides your daughters and son-in-law and your sons and whatever you have in this city, go, go get it and bring it out of this place. We're going to destroy this place. They said it. We're going to destroy this place. Because the cry of this sin is waxed great before the face of the Lord and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. God didn't destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels had been authorized, delegated authority to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels did. Two angels. And so the Bible said, Lot went out and spake to his sons-in-law that married his daughter and said, Up! Let's get out of here. God is going to destroy this city. But look at this now. Everybody look at me and listen to me carefully. The Bible said, when he told his son-in-laws that, such a state of emergency. They were willfully ignorant because they saw what happened. Could I tell you, right now we're living in one of the most crucial times America has ever gone through and most of the American people has blindfolds on. They don't want to see it. They don't want to hear it. People in churches don't want to hear it and they don't want to see it. We just want some good singing and we want to love our little pastor and we just want to have us a nice little church, but they don't want to hear what the watchman on the wall has to say anymore. Are you listening to me? I think most of my ministry is behind me. I've been in this thing 53 years, so I've got nothing to prove. If you're thinking that I'm going to get worried that you're not going to like me, friend, think again. <laughs> think again. It's not going to bother me if you like me or you don't like me. What I'm trying to say is this. If I hear something that you need to hear, I'm going to tell you. And I'm not going to back up from telling you. So there's, there was major blindness. 
But the Bible said in the morning, the angels told Lot, said, get your, get your family out of here. Evacuate your house. Y'all evacuate Sodom and Gomorrah. Get the belongings that you got. Get out. Hurry, get out. They said, tomorrow morning, we're going to destroy this, these cities. So it said in the morning, look at this. They arose and the angels hastened Lot. The angels stayed there with him all night. And the angels hastened Lot. That means they came with a state of emergency. Lot, arise, get up, get your wife up, and get your daughters up, which are here, lest you be consumed, lest you be consumed with the sins of this city. Are you hearing what that said? Lest you be consumed with the sins of the city. Their sins right now in major cities in America, that if people don't learn to wake up and get out of some of these cities, the sins of those cities are gonna consume many of these people. I'm telling you, I don't mind telling you, it's time, there comes a time to come and there comes a time to go. You need to flee for your life. I wanna show you what I'm talking about. That may sound like a radical statement, but I wanna tell you what I'm talking about. I wonder if the day's gonna come in America before Jesus comes, that cities are gonna become so lawless and you're gonna have such district attorneys that won't prosecute felons and there's gonna be lawlessness on every hand, robbery, murder, all these things and people are still living there with blindfolds on, but there's preachers like me that God's raising up and others that God's raising up and he may be saying, think about getting out while you can. This place is becoming a Sodom and a Gomorrah. Get out while you can. Ooh. Some of you, when you heard me say that, you might put the brakes on and say, oh, now he's, he's beginning to get a little bit fanatical. No, I want you to listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you right now, you better pray for many of your relatives that live in some of these large cities. The devil is trying to consume these cities and he's trying to consume the Christians. He's trying to gobble up the churches. Where is the last time you've ever heard of a powerful Holy Ghost filled church in some of these big cities? They're being gobbled up and spit out. Be careful friend that you don't stay too long in Sodom. Oh my God, I said be careful that you don't tarry too long in Sodom. Get out while the getting is good. Woo. Listen, it said while he lingered, while he what? While he lingered? If I've got an angel over here telling me get out, I'm gonna say, okay, <laughs> you know? But while he lingered, you know what that was? You got it. Willful ignorance. Slow. Now, listen to this. The angels laid hold on his hand. Look at this. The angels laid hold on his hand. An angel touched him. If you're in a stupor, I would think that if an angel touched me, I'd say, Ooh, whoa, thank you very much. An angel talked to him, an angel warned him, and now an angel reached out and grabbed hold of him. And look what he said. Laid hold of his hand and the hand of his wife. God was showing mercy. They evacuated them out of the city, marked for destruction. And so now the angel said, let us give you our plan of where to go now that we got you out of the city. We wanna tell you the best route. So when they had brought them forth abroad, the angel said, escape for your life now. Look not behind you. Don't stay in all the plain, get out of the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest you be consumed. I brought you out of the city. I took you by the hand. I warned you. I can't do anything else. We've got to go back and destroy these cities. But now keep going. 
Escape to the mountain. Don't stay in these plains lest you be consumed. You're gonna stay, you're gonna be too close. There's gonna be a terrible fire and brimstone. You don't wanna stay here. Keep moving, keep moving fast. And Lot said, oh no, no, not so, my Lord. If I have found grace in your sight and you have magnified thy mercy, which you showed unto me in saving my life, I can't escape to the mountain. What? I can't escape to the mountain lest some evil would overtake me and I die. I think if I'd have been that angel, I'd have get a swift kick in his rear end. I think I'd have kicked him so hard, I would have knocked him past the Milky Way. I can't, lest some wild animal kills me. You know what the angel should have said? Oh, you're gonna die, we can arrange that. <laughs> if you just stay here in the plains, you're gonna die. But I'm telling you, go to the mountains, that's the safest route. How many of you knows if an angel's talking to me, I'm going where the angel tells me to go. But he became willfully ignorant. Willfully ignorant. He heard it, but he rejected the information. Look at this. I can't escape to the mountain unless some evil take me and I die. Behold now, this city is nearer to flee into. It's just a little city. Let me escape to this city. Is it not a little city? And my soul shall live. So Lot hesitated and challenged the directions that the angels chose to give him and his family. And he said, there's wild animals there. I may die. See, what happens whenever you're in a place where there's major sin, you lose your reasoning abilities. Yes. Yes. Understand that? When you're in a place where there's prolific sin, and where it's an abominable sins that are really strong in that city, it affects people's thinking. Yes. And there's no doubt in my mind, but what's going on in America today, there's such abominable sins yes. that's taking place that it's even affecting the logic and the reasoning of many normal people. They're not even thinking normal anymore. They're not thinking about how great God is. They're not thinking about how thankful they ought to be that God sent the angels. They're thinking about wild animals. Wild animals. And listen to this. So the Bible says, Lot plotted his own escape route and chose a little city called Zor. And the angels said, well, hurry. So as the sun came up that morning on the earth, Lot entered into Zor. He didn't do what the angels told him. He didn't go to the mountains. He went where he wanted to go. He was not open for instruction. You know what I'm seeing today? I'm seeing many good people that used to be close to God and love God. I'm seeing many of them now where they don't take instructions anymore from men of God women of God, and including the Word of God. They're choosing what's right in their own sight. Are y'all listening to what I'm saying? I said, are you listening to what I'm saying? You know I'm telling you the truth. Now listen to this. When the sun came up on the earth, Lot was entering into Zor. He got his way. God wouldn't have waited another minute. He told those angels, let it go. It rained down fire and brimstone, and all the inhabitants perished. Now, this is so strange to me. Abraham interceded for Lot, but Abraham also interceded for Sodom and Gomorrah. But now, have you ever thought about this? That city was so wicked that Abraham stopped interceding with 10, and he said, surely, he won't do it because there's surely 10 righteous there. Well, Lot wasn't righteous. Lot escaped by the skin of his teeth only because of his uncle Abraham. That culture of Sodom and Gomorrah 
had worked its way into the very pores of the fiber of their souls. That when the angel said, don't turn and look back, Lot's wife turned like this and looked back. Her feet was facing Zor, but her head was facing Sodom. And she froze and became a pillar of salt. And God rained down fire and brimstone on Sodom and Gomorrah and the land was burned to a crisp and to this day, nothing grows there. God destroyed it. Suppose there's people in America today that's living in hell holes a lot like that, that has cities, names of cities that we all know. How much longer can you stay there? I'm asking you this question. How much longer can you stay there? How much longer can you stay where law and order is out the door? How much longer can you stay where sodomites are teaching your kids in the school system? Sodomites are behind the teacher's desk where your kids put an apple on that desk and they're teaching them sexual things and they're teaching them, you might not really be a male, you might not really be a female, and if you're beginning to wonder about that, I can help you. I think not, you better not try to help my child. You better not try to help, I'll take care of my child. But I, I, I'd just like to ask this question. I'd like to ask this question. How much longer can you stay in a city like that with ungodly leadership, darkness, prevalent darkness, People's got their eyes covered over willful ignorance and your kids are being taught like that on every hand. Listen, on every hand, wickedness is taking over some of our major cities. The Lord warned me about the, the winter and about the blue states. It wasn't more about the red states. And I saw more of, a, 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 of people moving and, and, and relocating. The Lord warning them to relocate and to start moving and doing things over 2024, going into 2020, before 2025. Uh, those angels were coming down and they were going to these homes and they were, they were doing this motion with their hand, doing like this, like, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, telling the people to leave. Come on, come on, come on, warning the people somehow. It was like it was very it was very strange because every angel was doing the motion with their hand doing this. They were doing this and they were waving the people to come on. And so they did this for probably, you know, several minutes for several minutes when you're in the spirit, you know, I couldn't really tell a time frame. You could just sense an urgency on their faces. I could see their faces and it felt such an urgency of a warning telling the people to come, 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 leave, leave, leave. You know, that's what I felt. You know, they didn't say anything. I could just see the body language that they were in a hurry. I'm coming to you with this message about the earth is speaking. Are you listening? I'm dealing with four sins, four major sins that will cause the earth to convulse. And if you look in the Bible, you'll see that man and land are indelibly connected the land will manifest what's going on with the man. When God put Adam in the garden, he put him there to tend the land and the land and Adam worked together and it was a beautiful thing. But when man sinned, the land began to rebel against man and the land began to manifest what was going on in man. Well, that same thing is going on today. That same concept, that same principle is working today where the land is going to manifest the sins that are proliferating in our nation and in the nations of the earth. They are proliferating. They are increasing at alarming rates. It's hard to keep up with it, but you're going to see the land begin to show forth and you're going to begin to see it act out in the way of earthquakes, volcanoes, the weather, and many other things. It's something that you need to be aware of it's going to start happening rapidly and quickly. Can't tell exactly when, but it's coming. The Holy Spirit spoke to me early in the morning and he said, I want you to warn the people this is coming. They need to be aware so they won't be afraid. They will pray. The Bible says that there's a connection between sin and the land. 
Adam said, because you have hearkened to the voice of your wife, uh, and, and God said unto Adam, because you've hearkened to the voice of your wife, and you've eaten of this forbidden tree, which I commanded you, you shall not eat of it. I told you not to eat of it, and cursed now is the ground for your sake. In sorrow, it's, the, the, the ground is going to disappoint you, and you're going to have much sorrow because now the land is not going to work with you the land has got a heavy load of sin on it and it's not going to work with you anymore. Communication's been broken. You was a steward. I created you to be a steward of the land and now you lost your stewardship of the land and the land is not going to work with you and you're not going to be able to work with the land. And as long as man was right with God, the land was beautiful. It was luscious. It produced with no toil. And as soon as sin got connected with both man and the land, man was even created from the earth. Man was created from land. Man, land. Man lost control and dominion of his stewardship of the land. And the land came under a curse. And it started working against Adam and Eve. Man became a servant to the land. He was constantly having to deal with thorns. God said, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And look at this unusual wording. I will heal their land. In other words, you'll be incomplete if I just forgive your sins and I don't heal the land. The land and man needs that unity. There, the man on the middle cross was Christ. He was God. They stretched him out like a male factor on that middle cross. And he took on himself the sins of the world. He took on himself, one man on the middle cross took on the sins of the whole universe, all of mankind. I believe that's why the Bible said the sky turned dark because the devil is the prince of darkness. I believe the demons gathered like bats and they came against that man on the middle cross. Let me tell you something, friend. There's never been a hero like Jesus Christ. Nobody. But notice what happened when Jesus hung on the, on the cross. The Bible said there was a great earthquake. Now, isn't that strange? What a time for an earthquake. What does that mean? When he took on all the sins of the world, the earth saw the sins of the world being piled on Christ and the earth couldn't take it. It reacted, it convulsed. And the earth shook. There was a great earthquake. When Jesus died at the sixth hour, he gave up the ghost. In connection with him becoming the sin offering, the earth convulsed. It just, it just convulsed, that's what it does. When there's an intensification of sin, the earth quakes. When Jesus made an end to sin and he went down into hell and he defeated and spoiled powers and principalities and he did it single-handedly and he came up out of the grave and he brought those that was down there in paradise in the heart of the earth in Abraham's bosom. When Jesus came forth from the grave, he conquered sin, death, and the grave. And when he came forth, the Bible said the earth quaked again. Look at it. On resurrection morning, it said, and behold, there was a great earthquake. Listen, two earthquakes in three days. And Israel doesn't have that many earthquakes. Listen to me. When he became sin, the earth reacted. And whenever he resurrected from the dead and he conquered sin, the earth, the Bible said there was a great earthquake. You know what a great earthquake is? 6.0 or above. And so not only when Jesus rose that morning from the grave, that got some attention, but the earthquake also heralded his resurrection and said, yeah, he's the one. He's, he, he dealt with it. He thoroughly dealt with the sin issue. Now there's four sins that the Bible mentions that defiles the land. And the Bible mentions these four and they're powerful sins and they're all in motion right now. First sin that I want to talk about is idolatry. 
God said, I will repay them double for their wickedness and their sin because they've defiled my land with the lifeless forms of their images, their vile images, and they have filled my inheritance with their detestable idols. Today, there's a spirit of strong delusion in America. People think they can worship another God besides our God. And people are led to believe that there's another way to the Father other than through Jesus Christ. This is not the case. You'll be cursed if you believe that. There is only one God. There is only one Jehovah. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He had a son, and his son's name is Jesus Christ, and he's the Savior of all mankind. There is no other way to the Father saved by Jesus Christ. In the days of Elijah, the nation of Israel had backslid. Jezebel now and her husband Ahab was on the throne leading Israel. Idolatrous worship was going on under Jezebel and Baal, and it was worship called Baal worship. And it was during the time of Elijah the prophet. And the Bible says in Deuteronomy 28, I want to read you what the Bible says about blessings. It says, if it shall come to pass, if you'll obey the voice of the Lord your God and observe carefully his commandments, which he commands you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all the nations of the earth. That's what he'll do. The Lord will open unto you his good treasure, the heavens, and he will give you rain on your land in its season, and he'll do that to bless the work of your hand. And you'll be so blessed that you'll lend to many nations, but you will not borrow. Deuteronomy also says this, but it shall come to pass if you don't obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all of his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. One of the curses is, in verse 23, your heavens, which are over your head, shall be bronzed over. And the earth, which is under your feet, will become iron. And the Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. If you don't obey the Lord and you don't serve him, and you don't give him honor for creating you and giving you a chance to live on the earth, but you're going to turn after some other god, some other evil entity, and you're going to give your worship to that. He'll change the rain that he would normally give you in your land. He'll change it to powder and dust. From the heaven, it shall come down on you until you're destroyed. This land will destroy you if you turn to idols. So isn't it interesting that the heavens were shut and no rain could fall in the days of Elijah for three years, because they were falling into Baal worship. The children of Israel were falling into Baal worship. And the Bible said God raised up Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead, and he said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, Elijah prophesied, and he said, there will be no rain. For three years, these years, except it comes out of my mouth. You have turned to Baal. You have turned away from the Lord. And now the heavens will withhold the rain until I say so. And you remember when Elijah built the altar to God? And those of Baal worship built their altars. The prophets of Baal built their altars. And Elijah prayed. They prayed. And you know the Bible said that the Lord answered Elijah by fire. And it said the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked it up, all the waters that was in the trench. Now when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they repented. And they said, the Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. When they saw the fire of God and that God answered by fire, they repented right there. And they knew that they was in a false religion. And Elijah said to them, seize the prophets of Baal. And Elijah brought them down to the brook, Kishon, and he killed them. Elijah killed 400 false prophets himself. And then Elijah said something interesting. Ah, after he killed the 400 false prophets, 
And after the children of Israel repented and said, the Lord, he is God. Look what he said. Elijah said, go up now and eat and drink for now there's a sound of rain. Rain's coming. As soon as that idolatry was dealt with and people repented, now the rain's going to come back. Second sin that the Bible said will cause the earth to convulse and to vomit is the sin of immorality, fornication, and homosexuality. Leviticus 18 discusses sexual sins. God said, do not defile yourselves with any of these ways because this is how the nations that I'm going to drive out before you became defiled. Even the land, he said, was defiled and I punished them for their sins and the land vomited out. The land vomited out its inhabitants. Everybody look at me and listen to me. God said the land vomited the people out caused them to have to evacuate. They couldn't stay on that land. For whatever reason, they had to evacuate. God caused the land to cause the people to spew them out where they couldn't come back. God said, if that's the way you're going to treat me, I'm God. When there was nothing, I created the earth. I created you out of nothing, and I put you on the earth and gave you a shot at life. And this is how you're going to treat me? With all this stuff going on about trans and the schools teaching kids, little kids, about trans and you're not really a female, you're not really a male, and all this stuff is happening, it's increasing the sin in the land and the earth is going to convulse. And it's going to convulse in ways you can't begin to imagine. Here's what the Lord said to tell you. He said there's going to begin to be things happening that the earth has never seen, but it's still going to be convulsing and vomiting, but it's going to be things the earth has never seen. And they're going to say, what does this mean? I don't even know what it means because I haven't seen it either. But the Lord said it will be on people's lips. Wonder what this means. But you're going to see it and you're going to remember this message. Jeremiah chapter 23 said, the land is full of adulterers. Land is full of people that's not faithful to a marriage partner. Jeremiah said, the land's full of adulterers. Full of it. Full. Full. Because of the curse, the land lies parched. And the pastures in the desert are withered. The prophets follow an evil course and use their power unjustly. Listen to this. In the days of Noah, there was extreme sexual perversion. There was even fallen angels coming down to having sex with the daughters of men. And society, civilization had been so corrupted and polluted with the natural and the supernatural coming together in sexual unity that giants came forth from that union. It was Nephilims. The sons of God were copulating and having relations with the daughters of men and it produced a, a hybrid race that disgusted God. And God said, I can't permit this. I'm going to destroy the earth and all of mankind. And he found Noah and if you don't think God will destroy sin, you better think again. And God found a man by the name of Noah and told him to build a boat. And he built this boat and it was only big enough for eight people and two of all the animals. And the Bible said that the way God destroyed the earth, the way God destroyed those antediluvians was with storms. It was with storm. The barometric pressure dropped on the planet, not just in the Middle East, but the barometric pressure dropped on the planet. And the Bible said it had never rained before. There was just a dew and a mist that would come up from the earth to water the earth. Rain began to fall. And I'm talking about training storms for 40 days and 40 nights. And it flooded the earth and killed all of mankind with the exception of Noah and his family and the animals. 
So it said in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, the 17th day of the month, all the fountains of the great deep, the cisterns in the heart of the earth that held water, rain water, the, the water that God had stored away, God even commanded that water to burst forth and it began to come up and water came up from the earth and water came down on the earth for 40 days and drowned everything. And the windows of heaven were open and the rain was on the earth 40 days and nights. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, there was such sexual perversion that even when the angels came and warned Lot to his house, they came to his house to warn Lot to get out. The men of Sodom saw the angels come to Lot's house and they tried to capture those angels and have sex with them. They were just burning at lust. And the angels had to blind those men and they went staggering out into the night because they were trying to overwhelm and rape those angels. That's how powerful and how lustful sin and lust had broken out in the earth. And so the Bible says that the Lord rained brown brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. He overthrew those cities. God overthrew those cities. On all the plain, inhabitants of the cities, and the Bible says, look at this, what grew on the ground. He scorched it, scorched it. He put an end to it. You better be careful. Just like, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna stick my neck out, and I'm gonna say it. It don't bother me a bit to say it, but I think it's gonna give some of you heartburn. But here's what I wanna say. Just like these people out there in America marching with the Palestinians and marching for Hamas, and they're protesting against Israel, you see that happening? That same thing, that same spirit is loose in America where people are protesting for the rights of homosexuals and transgenders. And it defies everything that has to do with God and his holiness. And if you ever fall in that trap, you're gonna be lost and you're gonna be down with the rest of them. And I'm telling you, you better back up and think twice. You better be what God's for and you better be against what God's against. That is the truth. Hear me, everybody. Hear me as clear and as plain as I can say it. You have no choice in the matter. If God's against it, I'm against it. I don't need to know nothing else. If he's against it and he says it's abomination, it's abomination. Listen, God has not turned his back on the homosexuals, but he's turned his back on that homosexual spirit. It's damning this country. It's going to damn America. Don't you be damned with it. The third reason that the earth will convulse and vomit is because of the shedding of innocent blood. Look at it. It says in the Bible, bloodshed pollutes the land. Atonement can't be made for the land on which the blood has been shed except by the blood of the one who shed it. In other words, they'll have to pay the cost of it. Do not defile the land where you live, where I dwell, for I, the Lord, dwell among the Israelites. I want to show you something about Cain and Abel. I'd never seen this before. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel and slew him, killed him, murdered him in cold blood. And the Lord said to Cain, where's Abel, your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? One of the first things where your rebellion shows up is in your mouth. When you take a stand opposite of God's, you'll become a smart aleck. And you'll find fault with anybody that tries to take a stand for holiness. And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. In other words, what God's saying is, I as God can hear the voice of that blood. That blood doesn't need vocal cords. That blood doesn't need a tongue. That blood doesn't need lungs. I hear that blood crying out to me from the ground. Look at this. This is what God said to Cain. You're cursed from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive your brother's blood. Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel brought God an offering from the flocks, a blood offering. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. He made his living from the ground. 
It said when you till the ground from now on, it won't yield to you anymore because innocent blood's been spilled on this ground. The ground now will turn against you. And he said, when you till the ground, it won't yield unto you his strength. But a fugitive and a vagabond shall you be in the earth. I looked up that word vagabond and I was shocked. One who has no home, a homeless, a desperate feeling of having no place to go, a desperate feeling of not belonging anywhere, not being able to be employed, no chance to have vision or good outlook, a good outlook for your future. Listen to me. The largest city in America is New York City on the East Coast. And the earth is vomiting out people out of New York City. They're leaving it by the thousands. That's one of the major abortion capitals of the world where they're doing full-term abortions. And the earth is vomiting, the city's vomiting people out. They're coming to Florida. They're going to Texas. They're coming to Georgia. They're going to South Carolina, all kinds of places. They're leaving there by the tens of thousands every month. There's a mass exodus. And people are leaving California by the hundreds of thousands. And they're settling in Texas. They're settling in Arizona. And they're settling in all other kind of places, all up and down the Gulf Coast. They're leaving California. The earth is vomiting them out. Why? Because of the shedding of innocent blood. The cities are being vomiting, they're vomiting out the inhabitants. And what you're going to see in America, and I want you to hear me because I'm telling you the truth, the cities that continue on with this killing of the, the innocent and shedding of innocent blood, when they kill these babies and their blood is crying out, oh Jesus, oh God, help me. And God hears them crying out from the ground. God is about to raise up and he's about to bring judgment in a way that you can't begin to even understand. The earth is crying out. The earth is mourning and the earth is travailing. The earth is groaning because of the shedding of innocent blood. And homelessness, homelessness is going to increase in beautiful cities across America that used to be picturesque and was on travel folders. Now you don't want to go there because there's people in the streets by the tens of thousands. Number four is broken covenants. The Bible said the earth is defiled by its people. They have disobeyed the laws, violated the statutes, and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse consumes the earth. People must bear their guilt for breaking covenant. Therefore, earth's inhabitants are burned up and very few are left. God looks at covenant as sacred. These are oaths that must not be broken. Why are we seeing a proliferation of divorce? Because it's a breaking of covenant till death do us part. It's sad. America made a covenant with God. Those who came to Jamestown in 1607 in the Virginia Compact, the reason why they came they said was to propagate and to expand the gospel of the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ and to take the gospel to people who were lying in darkness and had no knowledge of the one true God. Yes. The pilgrims arriving in Massachusetts stated the same thing in 1620. They proclaimed having undertaken a voyage for the glory of God and the advancement of the Christian faith. Yes. John Winthrop said in leading 700 Puritans to Massachusetts in 1631, Others may come to the new world for the wealth and for the furs, but we come with another goal, another end. We've come and entered into an explicit covenant with God to be his people in a new world. Yes. According to the historian William Federer, such Christian compacts became the model for the U.S. Constitution. Our founders put God first and foremost in the Declaration of Independence. Scriptures is even on the Liberty Bell to proclaim liberty throughout the land to all the inhabitants thereof. America must not forget the Judeo-Christian foundation and the covenants that were made with God when our nation was founded. If we forget, God said the land will vomit and the land will spew you out if you break covenant with God. One covenant 
I want to draw your attention to and I close. The Bible says this in Genesis, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, said unto thy seed have I given this land from the river of Egypt, the Nile River to the river Euphrates. Right there, the Nile River in blue, Euphrates River. God said, I'm giving you all this land. That includes Jordan, most of, uh, parts of Iraq, Syria, and even parts of Saudi Arabia. And I quit drawing the line because we don't know how far that way the line goes. But we do know it goes from the river of Nile into the Euphrates River. That's land they haven't gotten back yet. Somebody says, do you think this Psalms 83 is the war that's happening there right now? I think it very well could be. I think it's still developing. I think it's still simmering on the stove. I think it's possible. So the Bible said, the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram. He made a covenant with Abram. A covenant. God made a covenant. And when God makes a covenant, it's forever. And he said, unto your seed, Abram, that's the Jews, have I given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river Euphrates. I will make of you a great nation, Abram, and I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless you. I will curse them that curse you. And in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. This is direct correlation to how God treats people. He said, I'll treat them badly that treat you badly, and I'll treat them wonderfully that treat you wonderful. So God watches over his land, and he watches over Israel. When a nation mishandles Israel, and I want to just stop and say this. I want everybody to look at me and listen to me carefully. Oh, my God. October the 7th. Innocent blood. I'm saying this in context of what I'm preaching this morning. Innocent blood. Cutting babies' heads off. Killing little children's parents before their very eyes and the kids hiding out in the cabinet for 16 hours before they're rescued. Taking hostages. Shooting people. Raping women. Such unthinkable behavior. And that happened right there in Israel. I don't think that Hamas has counted the cost of the hell that's coming to them. And I'm not talking about necessarily through the IDF. I'm talking about from the hand of God. Because that's God's land. His eyes are on it from the beginning of the year to the ending of the year. That was innocent blood that was shed. They did nothing to nobody. There was already a ceasefire. So here's what I want to say to you in regard to what's going on in Israel right now and what's going on in Gaza and what may be about to go on in the other nations right around Israel. Just keep your station tuned because with that being shed, innocent blood being shed in Israel, we're going to see the retribution of God and it's not going to be pretty. So I could say a lot more about it, but I'm just going to press on. There's a direct correlation in how God treats people who treats Israel a certain way. He watches over it. When Russia comes against Israel in Ezekiel 38 and 39, which is called the War of Gog and Magog. <clears throat> when Russia comes with a coalition of nations, one of the first ones mentioned that comes with Russia against Israel is Iran, Persia. And there's other nations, it's a coalition of nations that comes with Russia against Israel. Here's what God said, and I want you to look at this. Watch how he uses the earth and he manifests himself in the earth when they start coming against Israel. Just listen to this. This is interesting. It shall come to pass at the same time when Gog comes against the land of Israel, says the Lord God, that my fury will come up in my face. In my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken. In that day there will be a great shaking in the land of Israel. There will be an earthquake in the land of Israel. The fish of the sea, the fowls of heaven, the beasts of the field, and all the creeping things that creep upon the earth, and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. God said, I'm mad. 
And the mountains will be thrown down and the steep places shall fall and every wall shall fall to the ground. So that's what happens whenever Russia decides to come against Israel and God will destroy Russia on the seven mountains of Israel along with that coalition of nations. God said, the fish of the sea will see it. The fowls that fly into heaven will see it. The beasts that graze in the fields will see it. Everything that creeps upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth, all the nations will see it and will shake it in my presence. And the mountains will be thrown down and the steep places will fall and every wall will fall to the ground whenever I stand up to defend Israel and to keep them from this consolidated effort to destroy them. So that's why I say today with what's going on in Israel, with that blood being shed, innocent blood being shed right there in Israel in those kibbutzes and the killing and the capture and the hostages and the way that's being handled 13 a day for four days and only God knows what's going to, how long are they going to keep the other ones? It's just insult and God sees it. Let me read to you this from the book of Revelation about an earthquake that's going to take place in the uh, book of Revelation after the church is gone. Listen to this. When he'd opened the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. <clears throat> The sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. The stars of heaven fell to the earth even as figs cast in timely figs when the earth is shaken with a mighty wind and the heavens departed as a scroll. Revelation 16, when that angel poured out his veil into the air, there came a great voice out of the temple in heaven saying, it's done. And there was voices and thunders and lightnings and there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth, the greatest earthquake of all times. So mighty an earthquake, the Bible says, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. The cities of the nations fell. Now, everybody listen to me. This is not a regional earthquake. This is a worldwide earthquake where the world is experiencing one major earthquake. It's shaking the nations of the world. This is not a regional, like a Los Angeles. This is the nations of the world. Look, look how powerful this earthquake is. The cities of the nations fell. Look at that. The cities of the nations, nations plural, fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance poor God to give her the cup of wine and the fierceness of his wrath. Every island fled away and mountains were not found. It cast them to the ground. Such a great earthquake. Islands passed away and mountains collapsed. Who can survive such a thing? See, the earth is convulsing. Why? The church is now gone. There's nothing to hinder it anymore. So the earth is convulsing like a mad person. It's like they're having seizures. It's like the earth is having a major seizure. The church is gone. The righteousness is gone. The people of God are not here. Now hell's taking over and the earth is going nuts. It's like it's going into seizures. It shall come to pass that who flees from the noise of fear shall fall into the pit and he that comes out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. The foundations of the earth do shake. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth has moved exceedingly. Look at this. The earth is utterly broken down. This is in Isaiah. It's talking about the earthquake in Revelation. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth has moved exceedingly. It sets 23 point something off a of perpendicular to give us the seasons. But the Bible says when this earthquake takes place that the earth is completely broken down and completely dissolved. The cities are collapsed. The islands have fled away. The mountains have collapsed. You say, I don't believe that. Well, you don't believe the Bible. I'm trying to tell you when the church is out of here, you don't want to be here. You don't want to be left, friends. 
I'm just trying to paint you a picture that if you're thinking somehow that it's going to be, you know, a great place to be and, well, I missed the rapture, but I'll take, no, it's going to be something that you're not prepared for and neither is anybody else. And it said, the earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. In verse 20, the earth shall reel to and fro. The earth will do this right here. Like a drunkard walking down the Bowery. The earth will reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it and it shall fall and not rise again. And that's why the Lord will burn off the outer cosmos of the earth and there'll be a new heavens and a new earth. So, I'm gonna remind you one more time and I'm gonna let you go. You will remember this message because I'm telling you, I heard from the Lord and the Lord said to tell them that there's things coming upon the earth that they need to be aware of that is coming. I'm just like that meteorologist that says there's a low pressure system up in the Pacific and it's not gonna hit us right now, but it's working its way this way and we'll see the results of that low pressure system. So there's some things that's not gonna happen right at the moment, but it may happen before this day's out. And I'm just trying to tell you to be prepared. Don't, be, don't let it take your breath away and don't let it shake your faith. But you're about to see things as evil proliferates and evil men proliferates and things become more out in the open, more bold. Nakedness, abominations, perversion, it becomes more bold. Innocent blood being shed, persecution of Christians, as you see all this stuff, the earth is just going to go into convulsions. So be ready for it. I was praying and the Lord showed me. He said, I need you to pray for Italy. And I said, what's going on with Italy, Lord? And he said, and he showed me, and I had an open eye vision again. And he showed me, he said, there's a massive volcano that's about to happen. And I saw a coastline, but it's, it's on the water. And there's a massive volcano there. And he told me, he said, this is going to happen. And he said, there will be signs right before there's a massive explosion. I saw it. I saw this thing explode huge. And he kept having me pray over the ocean, the water. There's something about the water, the ocean around Italy that is, there's something very dangerous. There's like a volcano in that water. And this is going to shoot off and it's going to cause major, major uh, devastation. It's going to be very serious. Well, if you're still watching, I hope you still are. I hope you watched all that. That was a blessing. I'm telling you, the man of God that John Kilpatrick is, I'm telling you, that, that sermon was a awesome word from the Lord. And I'm, I, I pray it blessed you. Um, if you're still watching, you, I know you're a true uh, a follower of me. And I just want to say thank you for your support. Um, let me pray for you all. Uh, I know it was a very uh, sobering word. And that's what it's going to take in these end times to shake the people, to let them know what's coming. I know it's not always going to be sugar and, 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 and grum drops, but it's sometimes we're going to have to hear the hard things, and that was a hard time word, and, and it's, it's a wake-up call. And so I want to pray for you all right now. Father, I just thank you, Father, for every single person that is, is watching this video still right now. I pray healing and wholeness and wellness over their bodies. We call deliverance over their minds. I call uh, freedom in their spirits. Father, that they're not bound by any kind of demonic spirit. And no stronghold can hold them back. We thank you, Lord, that the greater is he that is in them than he that is in the world. And, and no weapon formed against them is going to prosper. We thank you, Lord, for your great, mighty power that flows through each and every single one of us. Every believer that will call upon your name, you're there. And I thank you, Lord, that you're no respecter of persons. And that what you'll do for one, you'll do for another. And I thank you, Father, for your blood that covers us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. We thank you, Lord, for your divine protection. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for it in the name of Jesus. And everybody say amen.
Well, if you could like this video, please subscribe. If you could click that notification bell, it really helps us to get the gospel out. We are literally changing lives one soul at a time. People are coming to Jesus through this YouTube channel on a daily basis. And I just want to tell you, thank you for supporting me. Thank you for being a part of our family. Please uh, click those notification bells and help us because it helps us with the algorithm with, uh, with uh, YouTube. So I just want to say thank you all. Thank you, thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, and we will, uh, no, and what I want to tell you also is uh, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, and this is going to be an amazing year, 2024. 2024, you soar. 2024, we're going to soar like the wi on wings of eagles. Big things are coming in 2024 for the body of Christ. And so I just want to say, put a smile on your face and a song in your heart. Jesus loves you so much, and we will see you next time. You all have a blessed one. Bye-bye.